Please join me to remember my dear friend, our chaplain, uh, Bob Widdett, in prayer as he battles some health condition and trust that God will give him the relief he needs to be able to join us before the semester ends. Today I'm speaking on what I have called joy to the world, the Lord is come. Look at all the Weird things happen when you think about joy to the world, the Lord is come. But I open by reading Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, which says, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. A second reading from Luke chapter 2 begins. In those days, a decree went out to Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was the governor of Syria. And all went out to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. He was to be registered there with his wife, or betrothed wife, Mary who was with child. Verse 6 of Luke chapter 2. And while they were there, a time came for her to give birth, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. The angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto us is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is called Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Please, would you bow down your heads and say a short word of prayer with me. Dear Lord, we are thankful to you. We are thankful for the grace shown us. We are thankful for the gift of life you've given us. We are thankful that we could gather together to celebrate, reflect, and recall your coming into our world to make a difference in our lives. Grant me grace as I share your word. Grant my dear friends the grace to receive what you have for us. May we all be eager, leaning in, to receive that which you have for us today, that our very lives will be enriched by hearing from your word. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So, my younger one came to introduce me, so I will not embarrass her further than that. I like to call her my younger one. You know how to be, a, when you are father of girls, they have a lot of negotiation skills. You know that? I won't go further than that. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. I was born and raised in a small town in the mid-north of Ghana called Katanga. At a time I was being raised, 
This place had no electricity. Everything about my family spoke to the fact that it did not make sense that my mother chose for us to live there. But my mother liked to say it made business sense. I grew up in business home, so that explained a whole lot of things. Growing up in Katanga, one of the special occasions we celebrate is Christmas. By 24th night, citizens from this town will come from different parts of the country. Some will fly from different parts of the world, and they will be coming home. You ask, what is special about this place? Nothing special, except I was raised there. I was a village champion. They will come, and I remember in a, in a town that has about 15% Muslims, about 30% or more African traditionalists, Christians will sing at dawn on the 25th, going from house to house and singing Christmas carols, holding various forms of light, talking about the light that has come into our world. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. The passage I read from Isaiah was a passage to or from a location designated Galilee of the Gentiles at the time. A place that will be having a few Jews or Israelites, we will say, and a good number of Gentiles, depending upon how you situate it. This will be after Assyrians have come to take a whole lot of people into exile and a few Jews will be in the region with a lot of Gentiles. If you situate it in another situation, then it will be a different contest, but predominantly Gentile population with a few Jews in that contest. A message came from there about someone who would bring hope, who would come to change the situation that people who felt so vulnerable were in. It is in that setting we read about to us a child is born, which some of my friends in the Old Testament scholarship, my expert of this in Gordon College is Professor Joanna Klein, if you have any question on Old Testament, go and ask her. I send you to her. Hope was desperately needed. In the days of Isaiah, worship had become empty rituals. The people of God needed a leader who would come and change the course of affairs. In Isaiah's narrative, we think about perhaps Josiah in this scene. The same tradition, the same concept is invoked as Jesus will be born. That the world would need such a savior. Such a person that will come and transform the world around us. The world may seem so dark. The Jewish population relative to the world may seem so small. And yet God would choose someone to rise from the seemingly insignificant place. May I remind you, Jesus was a village champion who will grow up in Nazareth one of the most obscure places you can think about. And there, God would usher in a new reign to change the course of lives, without which I wouldn't have met you, without which I wouldn't have experienced the brotherhood, the joy that we can have, the fellowship, the teasing of friends like Jacob Jackson in my classroom.
Joy to the world, the Lord is come. First, he comes to the people of the world. Remember that when Jesus was born, a message was delivered to the ordinary, the least of professionals, shepherds in the field. And yet God used a spectacular way to reveal that message to the shepherds. They could have been telling themselves, society didn't think about them. In fact, they were so insignificant, no one cares about them. But guess what? God knew them. And God wanted them to know about what had just happened. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. He comes to the world to a people, ordinary, like you and me. He also comes to a people who are so far away from what you can think about as recipients of God's grace, like the Magi. Perhaps think about people in Iraq who may need to travel days, if not months, on the road to come and see the baby in Bethlehem. They were Gentiles. They did not know Yahweh. But God found a way to reveal himself to them and to show them how they may locate where the Savior of the world is born. Specific instructions were followed, and lo and behold, they would find him. He comes to the Magi. He also comes to people like Herod. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, will be born in the most insignificant place. Some of you were born in the, in the fanciest of hospitals. My daughter was born in Westminster and Chelsea Hospital where the royal families, I think Prince Williams and, and, and others were born in that same hospital. I was born in a village. That's okay. I'm not trying to debate that issue. <laughs> but I just want to suggest to you that when Jesus was born, his birth will be revealed to significant people and insignificant people. And it will be revealed to significant people like the king of the land, Harold. His very birth showed us something about Harold. He was powerful, but very insecure. He had wealth and power, but he had no security in the inside. He needed to know that the Savior of the world is born. Yes, he comes to the people of the world, and that may include you. The world has over 7 billion people. Golden College is a place where we can see students from different parts of the world. One of the exciting things I find is when I go to different parts of the world and I come back to campus, I always discover someone who was raised in that part of the world or someone who came from that part of the world in this small community. What a joy. The Savior comes to a people, not a mere space. He comes to you and to your neighbor. Whatever your circumstance, status, or condition. The message will be similar. The response will be different. For Herod, it will evoke anger. For the shepherds, it will be a cause of joy to track down the location of the baby. For the Magi, it will be a new journey to embark on for months, and they will say, it is worth it. What would be your reaction as you reflect on the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ into our world today? May I suggest to you that he came for you. He comes to the world also through Joseph and Mary. Remember, I said he came to the world. He came through Joseph and Mary. Ordinary people. 
who were just faithful. Read about them. God is not looking for extraordinary people to turn them into greatness, my friends. I was once a student in your place with a few people who are really making big differences in the world. I can see great leaders. I can see people who are serving in obscure places, touching lives that make no headlines, but glorifying God in this room. May I suggest to you that God is not looking for extraordinary people to do extraordinary things through them. That the coming of Jesus into our world should remind us that God is looking for ordinary people like Joseph and Mary to use them for extraordinary things. The qualities of Joseph and Mary that we will know in the scriptures is that they were devout to their faith. Mary was gracious. The Bible will say, with the angel will talk about full of grace. We also know that they were poor. In fact, the sacrifice they gave in the temple for the child is the sacrifice that poor people give. If you are a little bit richer, the prescription is different. So we know they were broke. Do you have a little bit more debt? Mary and Joseph know something about being broke. They were broke, but they were faithful. Joseph was a man who would tolerate and accept the fact that his betrothed wife would come in and say, I am pregnant, when he had not seen her. Mary was a woman whom God would trust that indeed with this ordinary teenager, if only I send an angel and speak to her about what is going on, she will have the capacity and the grace to receive and to believe to the extent of saying, with God, all things are possible. May I suggest to you that God is not looking for your track record to make determination about how he would use you to change the world. Yes, indeed, joy to the world. The Lord has come. He's come to the world through Joseph and Mary. And he comes as a savior of the world. As a savior, he did not choose to come with military might. He comes as a child. He does not come as a hero, but as a simple, vulnerable child. He was born in a manger, better than my friends who even come from the poorest homes in my village. You think about the first roommate of Jesus, and you think about sheep. Whenever you have issue with your roommates, just take it easy. <laughs> At least they are not saying, Dah. <laughs> He comes as a child, but think about something else. He comes as a child born in a manger. There was no place in the inn so he would experience and he would identify with the homeless. And have the only place that the vulnerable baby could have is within the immediate locale of sheep. Lowly and lonely yet he comes to the world, to all people, including you and I, to make a big change in our lives. Yes, he comes as a child. He comes also as a Lord. 
He comes as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He comes with authority. His government shall be on his shoulders. Friends, he does not come with all the military weapons he needs to flush the space and to flush the enemies and shoot them one by one. I was raised and I was one of three boys. So you can imagine if you give me any toy gun or any, any live gun, I enjoy just firing stuff. My friends like to say, targets, targets, let's call that. Yes, I like targets. You give me a small target and I'll punch it. But you see, Jesus did not come to satisfy this my childhood entertaining edge. He comes as the king of kings who rules over the world of darkness. Who rules over the world full of sin. Who rules over the affairs and the world which is plagued with all kinds of things and stepping in to rescue people so that he can give people the peace they need, the joy they need, the love they need, the strength they need, the release they need. He is the Lord who comes to deliver you. He is the Lord who comes to take charge over your affairs if you let him. Have you asked yourself how good a manager you have been over your own affairs lately? And I will suggest to you, why not ask Jesus to be the Lord of your affairs, of your life, of your thoughts, of your decisions? Jesus come with a name. His name is mentioned anytime in Luke, we talk about this baby. He shall be called Emmanuel. He shall be the savior of the world. Yes, his name is Jesus. I grew up where there are African traditionalists. And those in the African traditional religion used to tell us how some of us mentioning the name Jesus again and again and again disturbed them. Because the name has power. The name has power. My friends, it's more than just calling someone Chelsea because they were born in Chelsea in England. No. His name is the name above all other names. And as you think about this Christmas season, as you think about all these lights around, Think about the shepherds in the dark. On that day, they received the news. They saw the light. Little did they know, they were visiting the light of the world. Think about the Magi of the East. In a very dark night, as they look at the stars and think about light, they saw a particular light that was going to guide them. Little did they know they were going to see the light of the world. What is so dark in your life today? What is so dusty in your Where do you feel held bound by circumstances? Where do you feel oppressed in need of a savior? The light of the world is the light that you are. The Prince of Peace will give you peace. Where sadness resides. May the joy of the Lord be your portion. May the grace of the Lord penetrate the things that have taken hold of your mind and arrested all the joy and fulfillment you could have. May his peace be with you. 
I pray that he who has power to do all, who came into the world and changed our world, be allowed a space in your life that together in this community, in your life alone, wherever you go, you would extend the joy of the Lord in a world so dark, so depressed, so lost, in need of a Savior. God bless you. And I pray you have a great day. Thank you. You are dismissed. Have a blessed day.